कृष्ण चैतन्ना प्रभो निदाधा शिवाशदी गौभक्त And now chapter 24 talks with Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vadadhan Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Bhunda When Lord Chaitanya met Sarvabhauma Bhattacharya at Jagannath Puri, Bhattacharya, being the greatest logician of the day, also wanted to teach the Lord Vedanta. Since Bhattacharya was an elderly man, the age of Lord Chaitanya's father, he took compassion on the young sannyasi and requested him to learn Vedanta Sutra from him. Otherwise, Bhattacharya maintained, it would be difficult for Lord Chaitanya to continue as a sannyasi. When the Lord finally agreed, Bhattacharya began to teach him in the temple of Jagannath. Bhattacharya lectured on the Vedanta Sutra continuously for seven days, and the Lord heard him without speaking a word. On the eighth day, Bhattacharya said, "You have been hearing Vedanta Sutra from me for the past week, but you have not asked any questions, nor have you indicated that I am explaining it nicely." therefore i cannot tell whether you are understanding me or not i am a fool the lord replied i have no capacity to study vedanta sutra but since you ask me to hear you i am trying to listen i am simply listening to you because you said that it is the duty of every sanyasi to hear vedanta sutra but as far as the meaning you are conveying is concerned i cannot understand that Thus the Lord indicated that in the Mayavadi Sampradaya there are many so-called sannyasis who even though illiterate and unintelligent hear Vedanta Sutra from their spiritual master just as a matter of formality although they listen they do not understand anything as far as Lord Chaitanya was concerned he said that he did not understand the explanation of Bhattacharya not because it was too difficult for his understanding but because he did not approve of the mayavadi interpretation when the lord said that he was an uneducated fool and could not follow the expositions bhattacharya replied if you do not follow what i am saying Why don't you inquire? Why do you simply sit silently? It appears that you do have something to say about my explanations. My dear sir, the Lord replied, as far as the Vedanta Sutra or the codes of Vedanta are concerned, I can understand the meaning quite well. However, I cannot understand your explanations. There is nothing really difficult about the meaning of the original Vedanta Sutra. but the way you explain vedanta sutra appears to obscure the real meaning you do not elucidate the direct meaning but imagine something and consequently obscure the true meaning i think that you have a particular doctrine which you are trying to expound through the codes of vedanta sutra according to muktika upanishad there are 108 upanishads Among these are 1 Isha, 2 Kena, 3 Kata, 4 Prajna, 5 Mundaka, 6 Mandukya, 7 Titari, 8 Aitareya, 9 Chandogya, 10 Brihadaranyaka, 11 Brahma, 12 Kaivalya 13 Jabala 14 Shvetashva 15 Hamsa 16 Aruni 17 Garba 18 Narayana The 108 Upanishads contain all knowledge of the absolute truth 
The 108 prayer beads chanted by Vaishnavs represent the 108 Upanishads which contain full knowledge of the Absolute Truth. Some Vaishnav transcendentalists also think that the 108 beads represent the 108 companions of Lord Krishna who participate in his Ras dance. Lord Chaitanya protested against misinterpretations of the Upanishads, and he rejected any explanation which did not give the direct meaning of the Upanishads. The direct interpretation is called Abhidhavriti, whereas the indirect interpretation is called Lakshanavriti. The indirect interpretation serves no purpose. There are four kinds of understanding called 1. Direct understanding, Pratyaksha 2. Hypothetical understanding, Anumana 3. Historical understanding, Aitihaya and 4. Understanding to sound, Shabda Of these four, understanding from the Vedic scriptures which are the sound representations of the Absolute Truth, is the best method. The traditional Vedic students accept understanding through sound to be the best. The stool and bone of any living entity are considered to be impure according to Vedic literatures. Yet the Vedic literatures assert that cow dung and conch shells are pure. Apparently these statements are contradictory, but because cow dung and conch shells are considered pure by the Vedas, they are accepted as pure by the followers of the Vedas. If we want to understand the statements by indirect interpretation, then we have to challenge the Vedic statements. In other words, Vedic statements cannot be accepted by our imperfect interpretations. They must be accepted as they are. If they are not accepted in this way, there is no authority in the Vedic statements. According to Lord Chaitanya, those who try to give personal interpretations to the Vedic statements are not at all intelligent. They mislead their followers by inventing their own interpretations. In India, there is a class of men known as Arya Samaj, who say that they accept the original Vedas only and reject all other Vedic literatures. The motive of these people, however, is to give their own interpretation. According to Lord Chaitanya, such interpretations are not to be accepted. They are simply not Vedic. Lord Chaitanya said that the Vedic statements of the Upanishads are like sunlight. Everything is clear and very distinct when it is seen in the sunlight. The statements of the Vedas are similarly clear and distinct. The Mayavadi philosophers simply cover the sunlight with the cloud of misinterpretation. Lord Chaitanya then said that all the Vedic statements of the Upanishads aim at the ultimate truth known as Brahman. The word Brahman means the greatest, and when we speak of the greatest, we immediately refer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the source of all emanations. Unless the greatest possesses six opulences in full, he cannot be called the greatest. The greatest, who is full in six opulences, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In other words, the Supreme Brahman is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as well. In Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verse 12, Krishna is accepted by Arjun as the Supreme Brahman, Param Brahma. The conceptions of the impersonal Brahman and the localized Supersoul are contained within the understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead.
Whenever we speak of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we add the word Shri, indicating that He is full with six opulences. In other words, He is eternally a person. If He were not a person, the six opulences could not be present in fullness. If we say that the Supreme Absolute Truth is impersonal, we mean that His personality is not material. Thus, in order to distinguish His transcendental body from ordinary material bodies, some philosophers have explained Him as being impersonal from the material point of view. In other words, material personality is denied and spiritual personality is established. In the Shvetashvatara Upanishad 3.19, it is clearly explained that the Absolute Truth has no material legs and hands, but in that scripture it is indicated that he has spiritual hands by which he accepts everything offered to him. Similarly, he has no material eyes, but he does have spiritual eyes by which he can see everything and anything. Although he has no material ears, he can hear everything and anything. Having perfect senses, he knows past, future and present. Indeed, he knows everything, but no one can understand him, for by material senses he cannot be understood. Being the origin of all emanations, he is the supreme, the greatest, the personality of Godhead. There are many similar Vedic hymns which definitely establish that the Supreme Absolute Truth is a person who is not of this material world. For instance, in the Hayashirsha Pancharatra, it is explained that although in each and every Upanishad the Supreme Brahman is first viewed as impersonal, at the end the personal form of the Supreme Lord is accepted. A similar verse occurs in Sri Ishupanishad. Iranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam mukam tadvam pushan apavrinu satya dharmaya drishtaye, which means, O oh my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence. Please remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee." Unquote. From the Isha Upanishad, verse 15. This verse indicates that everyone should engage in devotional service to the Supreme Lord, who is the maintainer of this whole universe. Everyone is sustained by His mercy. Therefore, devotional service unto Him constitutes the true religion. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the eternal form of Satchit Ananda and His effulgence is spread throughout the creation, just as sunshine is spread throughout the solar system. And just as the sun disk is covered by the glaring effulgence of the sunshine, the transcendental form of the Lord is covered by the glaring effulgence called Brahmagyoti. Indeed, in this verse it is clearly stated that the eternal, blissful, cognizant form of the Supreme Lord is to be found within the glaring effulgence of the Brahmagyoti, which emanates from the body of the Supreme Lord. Thus the personal body of the Lord is the source of the Brahmagyoti, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14, verse 27 that the impersonal Brahman is dependent on the Supreme Personality is stated in the Hayashirsha Pancharatra and in every other Upanishad or Vedic scripture. Indeed, whenever there is talk of the impersonal Brahman in the beginning, the Supreme Personality is finally established at the end. Just as Ishopanishad indicates, 
the supreme absolute truth is both impersonal and personal eternally, but his personal aspect is more important than the impersonal one. According to a mantra in Taittiriya Upanishad, Yatova Imani Bhutani Jayante, this cosmic manifestation is but an emanation from the Supreme Absolute Truth, and it rests in the Supreme Absolute Truth. The Absolute Truth has been called the ablative, causative, and locative performer. Thus, as a performer, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for these are symptoms of personality. As the ablative performer of this cosmic manifestation, all thinking, feeling, and willing come from Him. Without thinking, feeling, and willing, there is no possibility of arrangement and design in the cosmic manifestation. Then again, He is causative, for He is the original designer of the cosmos. And He is locative, that is, everything is resting in His energy. These attributes are all clearly attributes of personality. In the Chandogya Upanishad 5 2, 3, it is said that when the Supreme Personality of Godhead desires to become many, he turns over material nature. As also confirmed in Aitareya Upanishad 1 1, Sa Aikshita, the Lord glanced at material nature. The cosmic manifestation did not exist before his glance. Therefore, his glance is not materially contaminated. His seeing power existed before the material creation. Therefore, his body is not material. His thinking, feeling, and acting are all transcendental. In other words, it should be concluded that the mind by which the Lord thinks, feels, and wills is transcendental and the eyes by which he glances over material nature are also transcendental. Since his transcendental body and all his senses existed before the material creation, the Lord also has a transcendental mind and transcendental thinking, feeling, and willing. This is the conclusion of all Vedic literature. The word Brahman is found everywhere throughout the Upanishads. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, are all taken together as the Absolute Truth. Brahman and Paramatma realization are considered stages toward the ultimate realization, which is realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the real conclusion of all Vedic literatures. Thus, according to the evidences afforded by various Vedic scriptures, the Supreme Lord Krishna is accepted as the ultimate goal of Brahman realization. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, verse 7, also confirms that there is nothing superior to Krishna. Madhvacharya, one of the greatest acharyas in Brahma's disciplic succession, 
has stated in his explanation to the Vedanta Sutra that everything can be seen through the authorities of the scriptures. He quoted a verse from Skanda Purana in which it is stated that the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Atarva Veda, Mahabharat, Pancharatra, and the original Ramayan are actually Vedic evidence. The Puranas, which are accepted by the Vaishnavas, are also considered to be Vedic evidence. Indeed, whatever is contained in that literature should be taken without argument as the ultimate conclusion. And all these literatures proclaim Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead.